Welcome to Pillow Talking. Hello. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> welcome to the only podcast shot from the bed. I'm JT. And I'm Nini. And this week, um, like always, we get started with something we saw on social media. Um, of course, it was Halloween last week, so we saw a lot of crazy costumes. Uh, for some yep. reason, it's 2019. We still got people doing blackface. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I get just to touch on blackface. I get why people do it. Uh, well, I get why some people do it. Like some people are really are trying to be like be into character, like get into character, but they just go too like far. Extra, you know, like yeah. yeah, like they just they're trying to like if if it's a costume party and like, they just trying to make sure they win, right? And they go too far with the blackface. But some people are really be trying to be racist. Like, yeah. like they be trying to paint on like what they consider black features. Right. Um, you know, the big lips, the big nose, you know. Exactly. And some actually look like the actual black based character where it is all stemmed from. Yeah, like the old, yeah, like, like the old and that's clearly racist. Like right. I, yeah. Like and now and the thing me and Dominique were talking about, like some of even some of the people who did blackface, like one that happened around here. They did like a Madea um, outfit. Like to us, we didn't really get offended by it because it really wasn't. It didn't look intentional. Like although what he did was racist and right. it could it be just official, had a, a negative connotation. Yeah, like because it is blackface, it is like okay, you didn't have to do it, right. and because you didn't have to do it, it offends certain people. Like you kind of knew what you were doing, right? By but then he also it. said that he didn't even know about blackface right which and, and that's, that's another and problem. that's something i didn't have a problem with because he actually yeah. now i don't know if he's telling the truth or not but, but people really wouldn't i don't him. assume that everybody knows that knows about yeah it's like, like if you didn't had a history book that's not true some of that stuff is not in the history that's books. real a lot of stuff that we didn't like get talk about I, I learned African about American? blackface from from twitter i learned about it from african-american history because like they never taught me about blackface in regular school i didn't learn and, about yeah. that until i got older like in college and stuff like right. that, like blackface wasn't something a history they book in yeah, high like school has. I never had a lesson in yeah. school. About now, that. rather than if you want to address that, that's something different. But I never had a lesson in school throughout grade school mm-hmm. about the history of blackface, and right. I'm keeping it 100. I've never, nobody ever told me this is what they used to do to You're like not in public school. Yeah, in school yeah. or just in general. Like I never had that conversation yeah, until I got older. Right, like. And I, I would see like the old cartoons and stuff, but, but I, like you would nobody never know ever what it would. Was, exactly. I, mean, I remember they actually showed us one in school, but they didn't explain it as blackface. They just was like this was a like a uh, what they I forgot what they called it, um, but pretty much they were they were showing um, um, just like the like older depictions of yeah. like racism and stuff. Mm-hmm. They didn't say it was blackface. That was like this is what they used to do. Right. That's like the extent of what I got. So. I'm not going to sit here and be like, he 100% knew what he was doing. But what I will say is you don't have to do blackface to get into character. Right. It's just that simple. It's just not wise in this day and age either. Definitely. It's definitely not wise to post it. Yeah. Like, if, you if know, people have never had posted it, nobody would have ever known. Like, this wouldn't have been and happening. That, that's it. And that's why I was telling you. I was like, that's why I kind of feel like they know what they're doing because... Well, whoever posted it, maybe. Did right. he post it or did somebody else post it of him? I don't know. I don't want to say he did or if he didn't. If he mm-hmm. posted it, I would actually feel that he was being genuine mm-hmm. and didn't know. But if somebody else posted it, I would feel like they just trying to get clout off his you Yeah, know, his they were doing it on purpose, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. But my, my whole thing on the black face thing in general is, for me, I don't get offended by most of them. Yeah. Only the ones that are clearly trying to, like, Highlight like what they call black features, like you know right. the big lips, the nose, the eyes, the big white teeth. Trying to make fun. Yeah, okay. like don't yeah. that's offensive to me. Right. But like the ones where it's literally just people, people who really not Our trying characters. to be. Yeah, just <laughs> they're trying to go overboard. I don't have a problem with, but I still yeah. tell them not to do it because it's just, it's just like people who say the n word. Right. Like some people, you can. It's some people, some black people or minorities, you can say the n word around. They don't care. Mm-hmm. But some people you sit around, you get punched in the face. Right. And that's just the the way it is. You know, it, it's just one of those things. Like, same thing with blackface. Some black people you might be at a party with might not care, might not offend them. But some people, 
So, you know. You know, it's just any brown paint on your right. other color body, skin, you know, they might trip even over. the whole thing with, and you might know more about this, but like with the makeup artists yeah. who, or like social media people who darken themselves yeah. to, to have like black features just to appeal to both like yeah. the white and black audiences. Like to me, like stuff like that, now that's offensive. Like when you clearly, oh, oh, I forgot her name. Like it was a particular makeup artist and like she literally was like making herself look mixed. And she was 100% white and like stuff a like that. A lot of those girls on YouTube and stuff like that do that. A lot of white girls. And I like some say it's because, you know, they want to be like that. Oh, they just admire, you know, right. black women. But it's still like. I think it's more. I think it is that they. I don't think they want to be black women. I think they want to benefit from the black women. And, th- and that makes sense. That Like they don't literally want to be a black woman. They just want to be able to d- dibble and dab in like the black culture. Because let's be real. Our culture is what drives you to. Instagram, mm-hmm. Twitter, mm-hmm. like the black and like the pop urban culture. So if you're not a part of that, it's a big demographic of people that you can't even reach. Right. That somebody like, I'm just trying to think of a mixed person right now. Uh, off the top of my head. Uh, wow, I can't yeah. do it. Who? You talking about on YouTube? It, just in general. like, a, if, like well, I was going to say Jasmine uh, Brown. She did that yeah. Walmart commercial. Yeah, 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 like somebody like that. Yeah. Or even like, even somebody like a queen, like somebody okay. who's just, who can do, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who is mixed, like, that's the closest thing to black that white people can get. Because you get any darker, we're going to be like, come on. Yeah. So they go to, they rather, they go to the mixed thing because, you know, whatever. I don't know. I wouldn't do it, but some people do it and whatever. Well, it's just like some black girls lighten, lighten themselves. themselves. Right, right. It's, so, all, it's you know, all about. And that's why it's like, you can't be mad at the... Like, it's like, how can you be mad at one side and our, you're not mad at the people who do it on our side? Like, you know, it's not, it's not, well, like, why I don't do think, that? I think, I don't want to say that you can't be mad at both sides. I just think it's a difference because when our side doesn't carry the residue of racism that their side carries. I know, babe, but white people can still be like, why do you want to do that? Like, you fault like you know you it's still not no, right. No, yeah, no, they can say it, but they can't be like it's racism. No, I don't think they should say that. I'm just saying it's right. honestly like not okay. Like right. that's you know just that's what period. I'm saying. Yeah, it's I don't not think, cool. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm I'm yeah. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on consistent, uh, consistent like you know as far as our cancel culture. I hate to use that word, but <laughs> if we're gonna be cancel culture, let's be consistent. Yeah. Like let's not let's hold each other to the same right. standards. Like that's how you be better people like you can't right. have different standards for different people because that's exactly what you don't want you don't want you know the, exactly. you don't want to live in a world where certain groups of people have different standards mm-hmm. and the other ones because that's what we're trying to get you know away from that's what we're trying to break right but we just keep you know, that bothers me what else you saw like you seen um i saw man honestly i've just been I saw a book of people saying they sick of seeing Kanye on my timeline. Right. That's all I saw. Like, ugh, it was just like a lot of yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like <laughs> we do it. We doing exactly what we're doing for Kanye is the same thing we did for Popeyes. Like, we are doing more promo for Kanye than mm-hmm. Kanye has ever done for himself. Right. Like, I've seen more people share Kanye stuff, than post I it, ever. than I've ever seen Kanye West. Right, even you, bigger than he, the Taylor Swift Kanye thing. West cannot pay for this amount of advertising. No way. Because. They got people who don't even really know him talking about him. Like, right. Yeah. So, that's my whole thing. Like, the Kanye thing to me, like I said, is what it is. That's his walk. And we're gonna see that we gonna see the results, and we are smart enough yep. to make conscious decisions of whether it's we, real. Yeah, like we believe on, it is like, or not. Like we, I don't. I just don't like when people think that we, you know, judge us for like letting him be himself. Like you know, letting right. him do that. And that's up to him. Like right. oh, how you know that? Like you don't. First of all, you don't know me. You know, you don't right, know right. my walk. And that, that bothers a lot of people. Because when it comes to stuff like, especially religion and stuff, yeah. everybody's walk is different. And for me to say as a as a Christian, if I would be like, oh, Kanye not really changing or whatever, then it would make my religion look like 
if, if it can't work for it Kanye, it can't work. Right? Who is Jesus? Man? Like that's what I'm saying. Like if it if it can't work for somebody like Kanye, then what's the point exactly. of me going to church? Because everything they be talking about, oh, we can change people's lives and people can become different people. Exactly. It's clearly not true if it can't work for Kanye. Exactly. So that's my whole thing. Like I'm not gonna ever get on any platform and say this person cannot be changed. Math, if Donald Trump t- tomorrow came out and was like, look, every, I, 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 <laughs> look, guys, I'm changing. Yeah. Look, what I was doing in the past, I ain't going to do no more. Mm-hmm. How, I can't turn around and be like, no, you're not right. allowed. Like, him. off top. No, like, it's just, no, look who you are. Nah. No. As long as you're still breathing, you have an opportunity to, to be, change your life. Yes. And that's how I feel. Yep. So you can literally go to sleep. And I forgot, I saw a post. I wish I could remember who posted it. But you can literally go to sleep one way, have a change of heart, wake up and be a whole other person and start that journey as that person. That's true. Like, it's people every day who change their lives. Like, they go from... From one day, yeah, every day. Like, right. I, I just had... We just was talking about that earlier, and I was like, yeah, but that was yesterday. I could be right. better this day. I could be on time today. Right. You know, like... <laughs> yeah. So, that's pretty much that. On that. That that big thing. Oh, I did want to say you saw um that post when it was like it was like a picture of Donald Trump and then Kanye next to each other and it was like um he felt the dude felt like Kanye was in this, that position to show the hearts of Christians like and then he was like um yeah that post didn't make sense so we're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to go into it being three hours long yeah anyway moving on um so this week I want to do. Fire relationships, I guess, segment. I really want to talk to you guys about the lie of marriage that they sell you. Because I know a lot of people um, get sold this dream of marriage that is going to be like rainbows and fairy tales, happy fairy tales, and a lot sex, sex, everything's going to change. And, <laughs> and people get married, and then the, the day after the wedding, they realize. Nothing has really changed. Right. <laughs> We're not these new magical people. <laughs> like our, life our is lives not... don't automatically become one. <laughs> yeah. We don't know each other a hundred percent yet. Yeah. We still go fight. Right. The fight's not going in, they're gonna get worse. They will. Um all of all the problems that we had separately now become joint problems. So my problems are her problems, her problems are my problems. And now we have to figure this out while living under the same roof. Right. We can't go home. Like, you know, we can't be like, whatever, bye. I'm leaving. Like, yeah. Imagine trying to go somewhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's talk. So, yeah. <laughs> that, let's just start there. So, that's the first thing. It's no, hey, I'm going to my place. You're going to your place. Nah. The, the most you can do is either, A, I'm going on a walk, or I'm leaving, but I have to come back home <laughs> to you. I don't have the, that's the first thing about being married. You don't, have the the option of separating right. unless you want to get divorced and that's stupid anyway. <laughs> like why would you get married to get divorced over yeah, yeah. an argument? But anyway, silly, silly, silly. So when you argue now, it's no more like when we were dating. Mm-hmm. If we argue, we could go a day or two without talking exactly. and not seeing each other. Right. Totally fine because we're dating. <laughs> Try that when you and we live across. We don't live. We live in two different cities. So right. Like, so I, I want you cannot do that when you're married. You live in the same roof. Right. Like you can, I'm gonna tell y'all. When me and Don used to fight, I would try to be all, ooh, macho man. I'm gonna sleep on the couch, bro. That was the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> like, I'm so happy he's admitting that. Like that used to be so it's dumb. Like, time, like stupid. looking back, <laughs> like it only lasted. You, you see my witness. Yeah. It lasted like a month because I realized it's so dumb for me to yeah. be mad and sleep on the couch. Like. I have to. And he was putting his own stuff on the couch. Like I, I would, yeah, like, I would never tell him to go on the couch. Like literally, I would like, put I my own stuff on the couch. Yeah, he would. For no, and she would just be in bed, like, okay, whatever. Like, <laughs> because that was so crazy to me. Why would you do that? <laughs> because I was sold this dream that oh, we're married. He was, and we shouldn't have these problems, and we have an argument. I need to be mad. I need to go sleep on the couch because that's what. You know, that's what I've seen. Yeah. That's what I saw on TV, movies. Right. When you fight, this is what, what happens. You yes. can't talk to each other. You can't right. be around each other. Somebody needs to be mad. Right. And I'm sitting there like, no. I don't know what, like, I don't know why they sell us this dream <laughs> or this picture. Nobody's, well, I'm not going to say nobody, but people don't really explain to you, like, 
they encourage you to get married. They don't explain. It encourage you to really learn what goes on in the marriage. They don't right. encourage you to sit down with people who've been married and talk right. to them and get that experience, especially the first year. Like exactly, and we uh, do you know, like we agree with like not really traditional counseling because you can have people who oh, yeah. friends are like older people. Who like our best known. friends counseled us yeah. before right. we got married. Like yes. they had been married. Already like, for yeah. like six years. Yeah. And they were our counselors before we got married. Right. And not even because we went to them. We just would talk. Like, so like we just watched them. They would just talk about their arguments and we just, you know, learn from it. Like, exactly. naturally, like, like you know. Like, we legit. Like, we legit would just go over there and talk. And they would yeah. just tell us stuff that they did and right. what didn't work for them and right. what to expect. And they were giving us the lessons that. The people who was around us and I, yeah, y'all need to get married. Exactly. Y'all need to get married. Should have been telling us right. instead of telling us like, oh, y'all need to make like get married, have kids, and do all this, blah blah blah, all the good stuff. Yeah. The people should have been telling us, hey, y'all need to get together. But look, y'all gonna have some rough spots. Right. Y'all gonna have to learn how to come together as one, tackle things together, you know, as right. one instead of two separate people. Like figure out how to compromise. Figure out. How to lose sometimes so right. the other person can win. Right. Like those type of lessons are what what people should be preaching before you get married. Right. It shouldn't be not um con- condemnation kind of like not this is gonna happen like oh, you better get married like for this or like you know what I mean like stuff like that like they should be giving you wisdom like right and it shouldn't know. it shouldn't be I'm not gonna say I'm not trying to say that marriage sucks because it's totally awesome. It is. It's like literally the best thing ever. But it's not like all, it's not just peaches and cream. But it is work. And I, yeah, now that not, I've been married, it's a free ride. I, I finally understand what people mean when they keep, they used to say like marriage is work, marriage is work. It's a lot that goes into it because you don't understand that like nothing, and I'm stressing this because people need to understand, nothing <laughs> changes from the day that you weren't married to the day that you were married. Like as far as like you, those days, like from so if you get married on a Friday or Saturday, <laughs> Sunday you guys are not gonna wake up two different people. Like you gonna be the same <laughs> wow. person you were when you got married, <laughs> like a sim. <laughs> like you literally gonna wake up the same people. Now you have to grow together, change together. You're not gonna wake up <coughs> a perfect husband to a, you know a perfect wife. Right. No way, nobody, nobody, nobody in the history of marriage has done right. that. Like, Matter of fact, what, do you you remember when we got married? Yes. So, all right, do you remember the day after we got married? Yeah. Was was it different at all? Did anything about our day no. change? No, just literally. literally nothing about our life changed. I don't even think we call each other husband and wife. We didn't. We called each other boyfriend and girlfriend for the longest. At least time. a month and a half. Yeah, like a, a the solid time. month. I still was calling her my girlfriend. Right. Just naturally. It was a very long time, like. I don't know, like, and I remember you would be like, you never say, oh, yeah, my husband. Like, I would just say his name. Yeah, like, she, Or my boyfriend. Like, I wouldn't even, even, like, I would be forgetting about that. Like, it wasn't even clicking that we were married. Yeah, like, it was just like, oh, snap. Married. And that's kind of the Until point. Like the, the, close to the first year, like. Right. I mean, we argued a lot our first year, too, like. <laughs> Right, but we had dumb arguments. Looking we did. back at it. Yeah, like, now, when you having, like, cheating stuff, like, that's a different different story. But we literally had, it was no infidelity, like, no. We just had dumb arguments. Just, yeah, like, growing was, arguments, like. Like, living together arguments. Living together literally, arguments. Literally, learning and, each other and arguments. And that's the type of stuff that you can't, people should be telling you to to know. To look, to look forward Because if we wouldn't have knew about this, right. we would have probably been. Broken up. Not broken. Oh, I'm not leaving you. <laughs> Aw. You're not leaving me, babe. Why would you say broken up? I was just gonna say. <laughs> I ar- thought you remember that time that- I thought you was gonna leave me. It was a stupid argument too, but I was like, "Oh, you're probably really gonna leave me this time." No, anyway. Cause you're pissed off. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> if we didn't know, we didn't have our friends telling us that year one is a tough year. We probably would have been like hating each other way yeah. worse and probably really needing counseling. But yeah. be- because we had friends and. People around us like, hey, that first year gonna be tough. Right. Just like Especially if you, like, I, was, I, I kind of compare it to when you get hired on a new job, and they're like, look, this first few months gonna be rough, but <laughs> if you just stick with it, yeah. all the money is gonna stuff flow, come in. Right. You gotta build yourself up, yeah. and it's gonna come in. That's mm-hmm. kind of how we approach it. Like, hey, we know we fighting right now, but our end goal 
Like, we're going to be so much better. In the future. And I remember yeah. I would say that all the time because I knew that. So, oh, yeah. it's you like... You really would say that. Like, time. and I would read books like... Like, our friends gave us books. What was the girl? Me, my girlfriend gave um, me a book, like, about marriage. She would tell me to read these books. Man, or shout out to... Wait. We got to say it. Shout out to Shantel. Right. And Hakeem. That's like, our that's, brother and our sister. That's bro. our brother and our sister. Yeah. And, like, they don't even know, like, the impact they have they on don't. us. They don't. Because we... It wasn't like we went to them for help. Right. We were just friends, friends, literally, like, and we talked about stuff. Yeah, what you should do with your friends, right? Talk. We were very transparent, like, especially me and Chantel. Like, yeah. Okay, finish the I'm sorry. Anyway, so yeah, she would give me book, like, tell me books to read that she read. You know, so it's not just like, oh yeah, go read this, maybe. You know, but it was definitely facts. You know, so anyway, we would read that and stuff, and like, I would always be like, hey, like. We're just learning each other. We're going to argue. Like, because at one point he didn't understand that we were going to argue. Like, it was just like, this is new to me. Like, why are we arguing like this? Like, why it's not supposed to be this hard, I think is what it was you thought. Like, it yeah, wasn't going to yeah, be yeah. this hard because it was hard for us. Well, my, my whole thing was, I was like, we don't have big problems. Yeah. We, financially, we, we were straight. Yeah. We didn't have no infidelity issues. Right. We didn't have any like parental issues. We agreed right. on most stuff. So I'm like, all the big three, like, it was and not sex, there. We're not even gonna talk about sex on here because it'll get crazy. <laughs> but just know, what? just know we had a baby quick. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh my god. <laughs> so we didn't have an issue in the top, you know, reason three why people things. get yeah. divorced. Right. And so I'm like, why are we, why are we fighting so much? It's hard, like, because if you think about it, and I always would tell her, like, it shouldn't be like this. Because we <laughs> we don't have issues and none of the f- top five. Because me, uh, that's why I, I will always hear like you know like all the TV shows whatever. <laughs> they always bring up top reasons people get divorced. Top yeah. reason people. It's do like this. he did research, like right. So we <laughs> wasn't having we didn't have any problems in the top four or five reasons. Yeah. Matter of fact, I didn't even see our problem on the list. It was just dumb stuff. Like what it was we literally about. growing pains, kind of like right. if you're growing and you're like you're a kid or a baby and you, you're hurting because you're growing. It literally was that. Like so, me, I didn't understand like why we why? were fighting, and then yeah. I realized the the day I realized um, that what we were doing was actually growing pains is when I it literally one day it clicked in my head. I was about to say something or do something. I was like, this is gonna start an argument, <laughs> and I was like, wait. That causes her to be mad. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. Like, and then once I start, once I start picking on, picking up on the stuff that would cause her to react a certain way, or you know, do something a certain way, then I realized, okay, I need to change how I approach that approach situation. It. Right. I had to learn her love language, right? And like, that's why I awesome. saw a post um, a few days ago. It was like, if you don't learn your partner's love language, yeah. it will have you buying them a car for their birthday when they really just want a private picnic. Right. Because you don't know what their love language, you don't right. know you don't... what how they receive and give love. Right. So for me, once I learned that I can't approach that meet the same way I approach my other friends or people I work with or people that, because it might cause her to feel a certain type of way, now I know, okay, let me do it. Or for example... If I know, for example, this this how I can get down me. So instead of me c- coming home and saying, "Man, the house dirty. Somebody need to clean it up." If I clean up the house, Dominique will automatically come home. If she see I started cleaning up the house, she will find something to clean up. <laughs> like she's not gonna come home, see the house is clean or partially clean, and not finish cleaning. So if that's a way I can show, like, oh. We need to clean the house. Yeah. Or she come home and just see me picking up stuff. I don't have to say nothing. Right. <laughs> You'd be like, go sit down. Like, <laughs> like, I don't even have to say nothing. She knows. That's just how she responds better to seeing me pick it up than me sitting here or text her, hey, just clean the house. Yeah. That she just responds better. Or, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. But you learn that over the first year. Right. So, pretty much, I just want people to understand that the first year, or maybe it might not be a year. It might be a few months. It might right. be longer than a year. It might be... One or two years, but right. there's going to be a period of growing pains and and learning to live with somebody, especially if you never lived with anybody before. Right. Me and her both had the privilege and the, I want to say the benefit of having a roommate and mm-hmm. living outside of our parents' home. Right. 
which that teaches you a lot of responsibility. For real, man. You learn how to pay bills. You learn how to share. You learn how to make how to, it on your own. Like, you know. Especially in college. Yeah. So you learn a lot. You learn, you learn how, to, a lot. how to deal with somebody else. As yeah. far as you like, learn how to be accountable because y'all got to share bills, right? Facts. So you learn yeah. how to not be selfish, right. how to be, I guess, thoughtful of other people. Yeah, like, definitely. like for me, like even sometimes to this day, it's kind of funny. Um, I still be like tripping that I don't have a that she's not my roommate <laughs> because um, I don't know. I used sometimes in the morning I play stuff loud on my phone, but I be forgetting that like. <laughs> yeah. She, and I'm like, why does he do that? I kid y'all not, like 6.30, like he is playing the game on his phone or like uh, playbacks all loud. And I'm like, babe, I'm asleep. Like, well, no, the crazy part is, is because I used to live with another sports fanatic. So we both would wake up early in the morning and be watch. watching sports shows loud. Probably be forgetting that. And it's he's like, in a different room though, like right, right here. Yeah. yeah, it's just simple stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. And learning how to argue. Oh my god! Yeah, but even talking. even nowadays we argue, but our argument's not as bad anymore. As heated as it used to. Because we know we have to lay down with each other. Yeah. Like, or even we do have a heated argument, we know it got to be fixed. I got. I can't ignore you. Like right. that's that's one of my biggest things. Right. I had to learn oh how. I used to ignore <sighs> because I didn't want to say something. Like the reason I she think I was ignoring just to be <sighs> petty. But I really was ignoring because that's what I saw people around me do in order to avoid saying stuff they didn't mean they just say out of anger. So I didn't want to ever say that out of anger that could hurt or hurt her feelings or, you know, argue more. So I just would ignore her not to do that. That bothered me, though. He, and that would bother knows I hate being ignored. I hate it. Like... It wasn't really bad, but I like now that I look back, I see totally see the progress. Like I could see first it started off him leaving. He was go, he would go drive around. Then it started off he would go sit on sleep on the couch. Then it started like okay, I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna go chill on the couch, but then I'm gonna come back and we gonna talk about it. Like and then now we just talk about it. Like you know, so like right then and there we get to the point because like. I always just say, like, we can't, I used to be like, we can't go to bed mad at each other. Like, right. I'm like, you don't know that we can't go to sleep mad at each other. Like, what if we don't wake up in the morning? You know, like, what, you know, I got all this stuff that I'll be thinking about, like, and we mad at each other. So, but yeah, he always used to be like, why are you so quick to forgive? Like, I don't know. Like, it was almost like you thought that I was like, I don't know, like not caring or like about your feelings or something like, because I was Well, so no, I just to, would think that you would be f- quick. Not to forgive, but it was like you would be quick to get over stuff. So I would think he was just brushing it off. No, I was just literally like, we need to figure it out. But I still forgive you. Like, but it is a problem, but you know. But I think the reason I progressed or showed progress because I saw her putting an effort on her side. And I just, when you love somebody and when you marry somebody, you don't want for the right reasons. You only want to see, you don't want to see just one person working on themselves to be better if you really care about them. You go do your part too. You not just go leave them. Right. Tell them what they gotta do to be better, and then not hold yourself to that same standard. Right. And I'm laughing because, like, he talked about Chantel and him. I used to call Chantel when we would have an argument. And I'd be like, Oh my god, I'm sick of him. Like, I don't understand how can I make it. Like, I am tired of him. Like, we just totally opposite. Like, now I still say that to Jose that we opposite, but like, and she would just be like. You you need to fix you like and it, it's really crazy how marriage works because it's like most of the times the women have the mouth you know what I mean like we have a mouth like the mouth that starts the anger in the other person or whatever you got a good mouth what the heck <laughs> <laughs> time out okay that's enough <laughs> anyway so yeah we are like you know the the wild mouth okay I guess you would say so. She was like, you got to start with you. Like, you need to figure out how to talk to people. Like, you got to stop talking the way you talk to him because then he's going to automatically, you know, go crazy. Like, it's like a volcano. Like, so I would be like, oh, my God. Like, I, because I, I, it was hard for me to submit that like that, you know, to watch what I say. Because I, I was like, why he can't watch what he say, you know? But then when I started doing that and I would tell him, I'd be like, see, you know, I didn't do this this time. I'd be like, I'm not going to do it. 
I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do this. And then after a while, he thought I was like, at first he thought I was joking, but then after a while, it just was like flowing. Like you would, I would say something calm. He wouldn't say nothing, and I'll be like, <laughs> okay, like right. all right, I guess it worked. So. We just keep growing like that. That's right. just it's like know. it's like you're literally growing with somebody, but at the same time you're having your own like self development on the it's side. Really, it's really crazy. You're growing together, but you're growing like, it's like I don't know, like don't know. separately but together. It's like a symbiotic like relationship in the middle, but like yeah. it's like it's like Ooh. you're getting bigger. <laughs> it's like a Venn diagram that just keeps getting bigger. Like the middle together is growing, but. You as a person, right. you're also expanding, right. like, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah, you literally. But yeah, so I, I guess the whole point of that, I don't want to say rant, but <laughs> whole point of it is, stop believing that fairy tale of of marriage. Yeah. It is it's hard, though. it's hard work. It's hard work, but let me say this: it is one of the best things, best things in life by far. The best things that we have been given, like, because, you know, right. like. The byproducts yeah. of, of a healthy marriage are literally, like, Maybe. literally it's the closest thing to, to like, I don't know. It's, like, the closest thing to being, like, perfection or, like, yeah, completion. Utopia. Like, like, it just feels <laughs> right. Like, when yeah. you marry somebody and you're doing what's right, then you see the things sprouting out. It just yeah, feels. You see the aftermath right it's, it's something like natural, on everybody it's, it's, it trickles down it's something like, like natural spiritual when they connect yeah. like the it's just really on cool. every level right it's amazing. so yeah. but so yeah it is amazing but at the same time it's a lot of work it's not something that just because you say i do the next day boom you ma- no you're right. not married you're literally dating with a ring now that's what i feel because you're still yeah, you're still dating yeah you're like still then you grow into the marriage. The marriage keeps growing. It never stops. And it's like, I remember they used to say that the first year is probably your hardest. Like, sometimes it's like the first year is the hardest. Right. And since I, we've, we haven't ever fought the way we did in our first our right. years. Like, we never, in our first couple of months, oh my God, horrible. So, but like, we always take that and that, that's like a learning, you right. know, experience for us. Like, we always want to do better. You know, like next every, year we ain't gonna do this. Like you know, like, every, it's always like every year we try to grow. Yeah, and like now that we know, we're trying to teach, and that's what we're doing here. Yeah, on this podcast, just letting you know what people told us and what we wish people would have told us. Right, and as we learn, we we should evolve. Yeah, because you Cause can't, that's how we gotta do. Yeah, you can't learn if you keep it all in. Right. So anyway, moving on real quick to my favorite part of the podcast. I love you, but I don't care. Uh, we're gonna talk about sports, but Ooh. of course, Louisiana had the week off. LSU and the Saints both are on a bye week at the same time, so no football stuff. Basketball, basketball is kind of weird this season. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot of bad teams are winning, good teams are losing. Uh, Steph Curry broke his hand. I actually saw that live. Crazy, really crazy to watch. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me on sports because the Saints didn't play. I don't have much to talk about, and I refuse to talk about the Lakers because LeBron plays for them. Really? I'm sorry. I'm a Kobe fan. Big but Lakers I, fan, but yeah. A lot of people are talking about that the Warriors suck. Seriously. They suck because nobody's playing. They all hurt. Oh, really? Steph is hurt. Clay is hurt. Draymond is hurt. Mm. And KD is gone. Golly. Why everybody hurt like that? Because they've been winning. They've been playing. You don't realize, like, when you go to, to the finals every year for, like, five years, that means you're playing 82 regular season games, then another 16, at least 16 to 20 more extra games. Yeah, so you're playing 100 games a season. Then on top of that, you got Olympic basketball. Then you got your basketball camps in the summer. Oh, right. Workouts. Yeah, so you got people who literally been playing basketball at a high level, the highest level, for five years straight. And then you wonder why the body started to break down. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yes. I get it. Not that I care, but I get it. <laughs> What's that? Um, I was um, uh, then I just was thinking about my hair group. God, I'm on this hair group on you in uh, on Facebook feed, and they're so mean. Like today, they were hard down talking about how ugly somebody's hair was. When Dude, they c- you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna post this. I'm gonna cut this clip, and you can put it in the pod. I mean, in the hair group. <laughs> 
Because I got a message for the hair group. Okay, y'all listening to me? Yeah. Y'all keep being me. Because those comments are funny. <laughs> I don't know what. I I don't know anything about hair. But when she be showing me the, like, the comments on the pictures, I be dying it's so laughing. I'm all, sad. I'm all for the jokes. As long it's as you funny, can take it yourself. Sad. Like, like My only thing, hair group. If you can put out jokes on other people's hair, <laughs> you gotta please be able to take, be able to take it. it back. Yeah. That's my only... But it's requirement. always the people who don't post up. Like, but if you can't take it back, that means you're just bullying. But if you're yeah, just joking and bullying. you can take it back, I'm all for but it. But like y'all, they be killing me. Like I know like, I, I be I'm showing a, but him. I be he be busting y'all, all laughing. Hair like, group. I don't know the name of it. I be dying at y'all comments. It's a natural like, hair group. Y'all the funniest people ever. Like y'all be really people really post like pictures, like serious pictures. Like look at my hair group. And look at the no color chill. of my hair. Like, y'all have like one no picture, shame. I was like, um, it was a color on this lady, and she was like, I was like, oh my god. Oh, yeah, Dominique was like, I can't wear that color because I, I look, look crazy. crazy. <laughs> and they was like, well, she looks. One crazy. girl was like, well, she looks crazy. And I, I was like, like yo. yo, and the girl was like. In the, Oh my god! They like she no could chill. see that. Like I was like, oh my god, they have zero chill. That's what I say. Don't mess with a black woman, hair, bro. Y'all be crazy over there. They here. do not care. Like it's just like they could say nice stuff, but they not. <laughs> like, and then they be like, why we can't say that? Like it's the truth. <laughs> I'm gonna post. Yeah, I'm gonna post my hair in the group. No, I just want them to start like talking about me. I'm gonna try to talk about them back. No, they gonna be hurt. They gonna no, be cursing. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in. They gonna be yeah. They gonna be trying to go ham. I love a good joke. You know we joke always success. Sometimes. But yeah, my hair, man, that hair group there, man. Them really? sisters, them sisters. That's all I gotta say. Them sisters. But I'm in so much groups on Facebook. Like my cousin is always like, "Why are you on all in all these groups on Facebook?" <laughs> like I don't really see my friends' timeline. Like I really don't see my friends' posts on my timeline. Like I'm just in like a bunch of groups. Because the groups are right. pretty. And you can mingle. You know, you can meet people. Actually, that, that I saw a, a post that was like, the the more mature you are, the more you center yourself around focus groups and anything. Mm-hmm. So whether it's Facebook, uh, whatever it is, mm-hmm. like you always find, a group. find people who have similar values right. so you guys can grow and share ideas. And that kind of shows maturity. Wow. Look at that. You heard it? You hear? Right. You hear? I'm mature. <laughs> I mean, even think about outside of that's true. Though. Like you I find mean, groups like, of people. Like if you're a business mind, you find yeah, people business people. Business mind, you, yeah, whatever like, you are, if you're a teacher, you find associations. You right. whatever it is. Like so, it like just, it was in a breastfeeding group. <laughs> like right, it just shows. Still in it. Like, it just shows that if if you are uh, able to to thrive in groups, it just shows you're mature. But anyway, but they're really good though. Like those yeah. are fun. Yeah, they help our podcast. They do. People share our stuff in groups. Like, yeah. I don't even be knowing or they be sending us messages at four o'clock y'all, in the morning. Yeah, fam. but I love it because it's, it's <laughs> we, crazy that people be cool. up watching our stuff like, at four o'clock in the morning. It's like, if I'm up, like these, hey, if I'm up, really I reply. Like, like I will always a. reply if I'm up. But anyway, yeah. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you girl. guys. Thanks for the support. That's very sweet. Thanks for people giving us credit for. Being the only podcast shot for the bed. Hey, I saw somebody comment under uh, in a group also. It was like, yo, they do their podcast from the bed. Hey, just wait till we get our, <laughs> our new bed and right. stuff. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy, man. It's gonna be A line. Yeah, yeah, anyway. We gotta go. But I'm tired, so <sighs> per usual. Oh, I ordered new bikes. Thought I should tell you. All right. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Good night.